Coming up on Cronkite News, spring training is back on in the Valley. We'll be live at a local spring training facility with more. Plus, an event geared towards supporting those who served here in Arizona. We'll show you how local veterans were able to access important services through this special one-day event. And later, we'll talk about how local Hispanic women are working to prevent respiratory diseases in their communities. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening, and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Fatma Abed. And I'm Brianna Isbell. Thank you for joining us. It's the day baseball fans here in the Valley have been waiting for. Finally, spring training opening day. The season almost didn't happen after a 99-day deadlock between owners and players over a new collective bargaining agreement. But the teams took the field today, and Cronkite News reporter Nick Shesky is out in Sloan Field in Mesa with details on how businesses feel about the on-again, off-again season. As you can see, there are many people here at Sloan Park excited about baseball finally being back. But the fans aren't the only ones buzzing. Many restaurants around the Valley are breathing a sigh of, a sigh of relief as teams take the field. Nico Danielle Siegel opened her restaurant, Sante, last December with spring training in mind. It's a big part of the Valley. I mean, I think I lived here, um, I moved back here recently, and I lived here for 23 years of my life, and it was always like, a, you know, a huge revenue for the Valley, so it's, it's exceptional that it didn't totally close down. Business owners have been sitting on the edge of their seats for the past few months. And now that there is finally a baseball season, Danielle Siegel expects fans to come out in full force. I think there's going to be a lot of influx of business in the next like next week or so, especially since it's kind of just beginning. Um, I think this says it's so short that people are going to be out and about immediately. For some restaurants, it's not just the quantity of people coming to town for spring training that matters. For some, like Butters, Pancakes, and Cafe, the best part of spring training is seeing returning customers. We're also very happy to get to see our friends that we've made over the years. You know, this has been an ongoing thing for us for over a decade, and we've seen the same people coming and going for years now. Sante is looking forward to even more patrons during its first spring training. And who knows, maybe even a few MLB players. We've had some basketball players already in here, and it was funny. I was speaking to our team, and I was like, you know what? Our food and our menu is so aligned with baseball players and, you know, the members of that kind of community. I think it's going to be really cool to see more and more people. Today is day one of 21, so if you want to catch some of the baseball action, make sure you do so before April 6th. We'll be back here at Sloan Park later with a special Cronkite sports report for opening day. In Mesa, Nick Shesky, Cronkite News. It's been three weeks since Russia began its invasion of Ukraine. 21 people were killed in Marefa, Ukraine today after Russian rockets attacked the town. Marefa is south of Kharkiv and has a population of about 20,000. On Wednesday, a Russian airstrike hit a theater that was being used as a bomb shelter in the city of Mariupol. The makeshift shelter was protecting hundreds of women and children at the time of the attack. At least 130 survivors have been found so far. When asked if the president should recognize Putin as a war criminal, Senator Mark Kelly had this to say. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I always call it call it what it is. Uh -huh. I mean, he is attacking hospitals, maternity wards, mm -hmm. apartment buildings. Um, when you, when you uh, direct fire on civilians, by definition, you're a war criminal. Kelly's statement comes as Arizona Congress members call on the U.S. to do more to support Ukraine. Other Arizona legislators, like Senator Kirsten Sinema, Representative Greg Stanton, and Representative Ruben Gallego, have praised Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky's leadership and courage, and are pledging to continue to support the country's efforts. Talks of sending monetary aid, military equipment, and other resources to Ukraine are continuing in Congress. A new subvariant of COVID's Omicron strain has made its way to Arizona. It's called BA2, and the CDC says it's now responsible for 25% of new COVID cases in the U.S. 19 cases of the variant were reported in Pima County yesterday. It's accounting for 27% of cases throughout Arizona, California, and Nevada with even more BA2 cases being reported in the Northeast. The new variant is more transmissible than other COVID strains, but not necessarily more deadly. Experts still expect total COVID-19 cases to rise in the U.S. as a result of the new strain spread. 
From a new variant to new ways to fight COVID, more than 30 companies expect to start production on generic versions of Pfizer's COVID-19 pill. These companies include drug ma makers in Asia, the Caribbean, the Middle East, and Europe. Because of new agreements, companies in these countries will be able to start making either ingredients that go into the pill or even the pill itself. The hope is that this pill will help poorer countries with lower vaccination rates. The company's hope is to be ready for approval later this year. Today, hundreds of veterans lined up at the Arizona Fairgrounds for the 20th annual stand down event in Phoenix. The event brings together all kinds of services in one place. Concrete News reporter Valeria Rodriguez tells us more about how this event helps many veterans across the valley. The event was canceled last year due to the pandemic, but this year volunteers and community members are ready to help veterans once again. Haircuts, showers, legal and medical services are just some things that are being offered to veterans today. This year we are going with a one day event. It's normally a lot longer, uh, so we're able to see a lot more veterans. In uh, 2020, we were able to service about 2,000 veterans here and provide them services. This veteran found a way to give back to the community. This tent, we provide them the necessities. We try to provide whatever a homeless person may need on the street. And we help all the other veterans that come through. We try to assist them in getting the direction they need to get something. Due to the pandemic, many veterans have experienced housing insecurity and have a difficult time finding resources that can help them. It's absolutely amazing. There are so many resources that people don't know that are out there. And, you know, there's so many people, so many veterans that need help. Um, there's just not enough of us to help them. And I absolutely love this. Many people around the Valley appreciate the help of the community and are glad that the coalition has been able to find a way to provide services that would normally be unattainable. Veterans make the ultimate sacrifice for us. Without them, you know, people get upset when I say this, but without veterans, we wouldn't be able to enjoy the frivolous things, you know, like going to a ball game. So without veterans making ultimate sacrifice, I think it's only right that we give something back to them. This event was coordinated by the Arizona Veterans Stand Down Alliance, which is part of the Arizona Housing Coalition. In the newsroom, Valeria Rodriguez, Cronkite News. Coming up on Cronkite News, the Phoenix metropolitan area is infamous for its unhealthy ozone levels. Yet a group of Phoenix women are working to offset the damage this ozone can have. We'll explain later. And weather conditions in Arizona are currently drier than expected and may continue to stay that way. We'll have the details after the break. On your time, watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons, your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. Every day I wake up, my first thought is how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. Would you welcome, please, the amazing. Everybody that watches this, they say that I am the greatest that they've ever seen. We go, lights up. Whoa. As artists, we conduct our educations in public. You can never know whether it's going to be a success. One just has to risk it. It's you and the work and the place. It's a very particular relationship. Here's our lens. 
tell us what you think. Friday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. A group of Hispanic women from Phoenix participates in a workshop to prevent respiratory diseases in their families. Cronkite News reporter Valeria Rod Rodriguez tells us why their work is making a difference in their communities. Minerva Velarde has been a volunteer at Unlimited Potential for the last seven years and teaches a community about asthma. We explain to them what asthma is, what are the symptoms, what having asthma means, and how it is related to the environment. According to the ASU Global Institute of Sustainability and Innovation, 16% of children under the age of 19 who live in a low-income Latino neighborhood in Phoenix have been diagnosed with asthma. This is twice the national average. Unlimited potential also focuses on other factors that contribute to respiratory diseases. Prevention of tobacco. Prevention of tobacco so that people become informed if they ever have a question or wonder why things are happening to their body. The health promoter is educated enough to give them information. According to the State of Air 2021 report, the Phoenix metropolitan area is ranked fifth in the nation for the number of unhealthy ozone days. Palo Verde trees, just like this one right here, are being planted in South Phoenix to help clean the air. They need minimal water, which is perfect for the Arizona desert. After learning more about overall health, they spread the word into their communities, creating a network to keep them informed to find alternate solutions. We look for resources so that trees can be planted in this area and water fountains. Unlimited Potential provides these classes in Spanish twice a week. In Phoenix, Valer Rodriguez, Cronkite News. To learn more about the programs, you can go to their website, unlimitedpotentialaz.org. Some good news for the economy. The number of people filing for unemployment fell yet again last week. The Labor Department reported that jobless claims fell last week to 214,000. That number is down by 15,000 from the week before that. The four-week average for claims also fell to 223,000. And just over 1.4 million Americans collected unemployment the first week of March. We haven't seen a number that low in 50 years. Already, the drought hitting the West could worsen in the coming months. That news comes today as Lake Powell hits record low levels. That's according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Its forecasters predicted a, quote, prolonged persistent drought in the West for the second year in a row. And below average pre precipitation is expected. The drought monitor also shows dry conditions expanded rapidly in the West this past week. Temperatures have been warming up in Phoenix these past few days. Madison Thomas joins us now in the Cronkite News Weather Center with more on the highs and lows we can expect as the week comes to an end. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. And as you can see, we are super lucky here in Phoenix with the weather. Today's high is 79 degrees, and our luck continues as we have nice temperatures all throughout the rest of the evening and into the night. At 6 p.m., we will be at 78 degrees, and here at 10 p.m., we will be at 67. Now, looking at the high temperatures all across the state of Arizona for tomorrow, up north, we will see our coolest temperatures. In Flagstaff, we will have a high of 55 degrees, and we have 56 degrees in the Grand Canyon. Here in Phoenix tomorrow, we will see a high of 83 degrees, and tomorrow we will see our highest temperatures in the state over in Yuma at 87. Traveling east from Yuma to Tucson, we will see 80 degree temperatures. Now, looking at the forecast for the next several days, I'm gonna tell you guys, basketball isn't the only thing to be excited for. Look at these nice warm temperatures. On Saturday, we will see a high of 85. Things do cool down a little bit on Sunday, when we will see a high of 73 degrees and 20% chance of rain and clouds throughout the week as well. But I do wanna point out that Monday is the official start of spring and temperatures only increase from there and Friday, we will have a high of 88. From the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Madison Thomas. I'm Andrew Curlin here at Sloan Park in Mesa, home of the Cubs spring training. We're doing this Cronkite sports report in the field. Coming up after the break, we'll talk about spring training, March Madness, and a whole lot more.
Cronkite News is more than your local news station. Through our innovative ideas, we create new ways to connect with our viewers and have their stories be heard. Our cutting edge technology allows us to take a deeper dive into seeking the truth and delivering new perspectives. Stay up to date on top Arizona stories anytime on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook at Cronkite News. It's prime time on your time. Watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons, your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. Every day I wake up, my first thought is, how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. Would you welcome, please, the amazing. Everybody that watches this, they say that I'm the greatest that they've ever seen. Here we go, lights up. Whoa. As artists, we conduct our educations in public. You can never know whether it's going to be a success. One just has to risk it. It's you and the work and the place. It's a very particular relationship. Here's our lens. Tell us what you think. Friday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. Welcome back to Cronkite News. I'm Andrew Curlin with your Cronkite Sports Report. No, we're not in the studio, as mentioned, here at Sloan Park here in Mesa, where spring training is underway. Cubs versus White Sox, one of four games in this opening day of spring training. As for the rest of the league, they're going to have a shorter window to get started before the regular season starts. Giants manager Gabe Kepler talked about the keys to success for their team. One other theme that we, we touched on was unselfishness. We saw that be a very effective way to run a clubhouse, run a dugout, run our between the lines work. March Madness is underway today, but for U of A fans, the number one seeded men's team plays tomorrow in San Diego. The number four women's U of A basketball team plays on Saturday in Tucson. Both of those teams looking to make deep runs into this tournament. Now, ASU, their season is over, but there's one shining spot for the team, and that came with Bobby Hurley, who got a chance to coach his son, Bobby Hurley Jr. Cronkite News reporter Colt Almodova got a chance to look into that father-son duo. Arizona State freshman guard Bobby Hurley Jr. and his father head coach Bobby Hurley embody the phrase like father, like son. Not only do the two have the same name, but they're also on the same team. On the court, Hurley Jr. dons the number 11 jersey like his dad once did, using the path of his pops to make his own legacy. He is arguably the most prestigious college point guard of all time, and he did it at six foot, 165 pounds. So like he's in the same boat I am. For Hurley Jr., being the son of a basketball icon can bring along some added pressure. However, the Hurleys have always kept their focus on hooping. My husband never put any kind of pressure on him. He said, you know, basketball should be fun. You should enjoy doing it. And if you're enjoying it, then that's all that matters. Hurley Jr. and his father have always shared a love for the game, a passion that has brought them together on the same court once again. When I was finishing up in, in the NBA and playing and I'd have Bobby out on the court and he's crawling after the ball. So I could see, see still see that visual. It's. Uh, crazy how time flies. I remember when I was like five years old in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I would shoot in the you know, backyard with my dad and we would shoot like 20 shots and we'd go back inside and watch like the Celtics in the finals. So like 
we both love basketball, and that's like something we've always had. During their time in Florida, Coach Hurley would often take his son to March Madness games, including a time when the two got to watch ASU, a school that seemed to catch the attention of young Hurley Jr. The Sun Devils were there. That was when James Harden was there. So got to watch them win one game. And I think Bobby was like four years old then. And uh, he loved he loved Sparky. So it was, there was something always clicking there from, from way back when. After playing his high school ball at Scottsdale's Notre Dame prep, Hurley Jr. decided to stay in the Valley and become a Sun Devil, keeping the Hurleys together in Tempe. It's such a joy for me uh, you know, as, as a parent to be able to, to have that quality time with him. And, you know, these days aren't going to last forever. Off the court, Hurley Jr. hopes to become a basketball TV analyst. And who knows, maybe this father-son duo could team up once again down the road in the broadcast booth. In Tempe, Colt Amadova, Cronkite News. GCU women's basketball team lost in the first round of the WNIT last night. They fell to the University of New Mexico 92-72. to Despite the 20-point loss, this was the Lopes' best season since becoming a Division I team back in 2013. GCU won 22 games on the year. We have an update on Brittany Griner's situation in Russia. A Russian state news agency is reporting a Moscow court extended her arrest to May 19th. Griner has been detained in Russia since mid-February on drug charges. With the Mercury starting their season on May 6th, they will most likely have to begin play without Griner, who helped them lead to a WNBA Finals last season. Finally, college basketball is not the only tournament to begin. The best wrestlers in the country are making their way to Detroit for the NCAA Division I championship. Cronkite News reporter Shane Fricke has a closer look at ASU's hopes for a title. The ASU wrestling team is coming off their third straight Pac-12 championship after narrowly beating Oregon State and Tempe last week. And even though every trophy is important, the Sun Devils have their sights set on something bigger. A little bit of the new normals to win the Pac-12 championship. I think it's kind of something they expect. Uh, obviously, having six champions feels good. Uh, but the real show is coming, right? That's the NCAA tournament in two weeks. Big aspirations of winning the NCAA tournament comes with pressure. For Coach Jones, he knows it's important to keep his athletes level-minded. People tend to get weird at championship time. The pressure, oh my God, I gotta win. For us, it's really just being thankful and grateful for the opportunity. We're grateful that we get to be here, thankful we get to be in this situation. Jones's message of being grateful has helped undefeated heavyweight wrestler Colton Schultz keep his nerves down and his excitement up. I've gotta remind myself just to be grateful that uh, you know, being, being a top guy, I'm sure there's a lot of targets on a lot of people looking, looking to beat you, but um, at the same time, I know I got a great support system cheering me on, and uh, yeah, I know I know on my best day I can beat anybody. The Sun Devils are taking seven wrestlers to the tournament this year, six champions and one at-large bid. These seven wrestlers aim to bring home the team national championship trophy, a feat that hasn't been done since 1988. In Tempe, Shane Fricky, Cronkite News. Well, we're soaking it all in here at Sloan Park. So good to be back, to have fans back. And like we've mentioned, there's only three weeks to catch the spring training, so you better get here. I think I might stay here a little bit longer, but hold down it for me in the studio. Coming up after the break, some images from out of this world. NASA's Webb Telescope has now aligned its mirrors to take images of space. We'll have those photos after the break. Your favorite member benefit is getting better and bigger. This is wonderful. Over the next year, Passport is adding new shows and doubling the number of episodes for you to stream. They give us all that they've got. From your favorite cooking and travel series. Even the stairs are breathtaking. To history specials and award-winning documentaries. Better and bigger. That really is the fun part. Stream on any device with Passport on the PBS Video app.
Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. NASA is now even closer to learning more about outer space. The organization announced yesterday that a series of alignments on board the Webb telescope was a success. Here you can see an image taken from the telescope thanks to those new mirror alignments. This is actually a view of a star, and in the background you can even see distant galaxies among some other stars. And here is a view of those 18 mirror alignments. This was taken to make sure everything was engineered and aligned correctly. They're lit up because all of those segments are collecting light from the same star. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.